Welcome to Sappho at Sea. This is Melissa. And my name's Kaylee. We are a couple from Vancouver Island, British Columbia, and we live on a sailboat. This September, we bought a new to us, Waterline 38. This is a steel sailboat that we call Sappho. As of now, Sappho remains in storage because there's still things we want to do before we splash her in the spring. We also ran away for a few months up north to work and visit with family. We've said goodbye to our baby. I thought we were taking a picture. No. <laughs> <laughs> Until the spring. So, back in February. See you in a few months. See you in a few months. <sighs> Before we had Sappho, we lived on a 28-foot Ericsson named Ruckus. This was Melissa's first boat. It's where we fell in love. And it's also where Melissa started to teach me about sailing. I moved into Ruckus in May. Moving into such a small space of course meant downsizing so we went through my things. I don't know why I went and bought like <laughs> 500 crayons. <laughs> Thinking I was gonna call her, but I didn't. Don't eat them, they're still full packs, untouched. We're not gonna draw pictures. <laughs> With Sharpies? Well, I have this too. Where are all my drawings I was gonna do? Oh my god. See? Artiste. <laughs> See all my art? <laughs> <laughs> this is my taxes. <laughs> So we gotta keep this on the boat because this is where I file all my That's <laughs> your contacts box. Yeah. Yeah, I have like a big file folder that has all of my documents, including taxes. So do we need to reckon Marty season one and season two? Um no. Okay. I don't have any way to play it. Yeah, me either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, there's that. that Ruckus was small, but she had everything you needed right there. From the beginning, it honestly just felt really cozy and comfortable. There were some pretty big differences when it came to living in a house versus living on a boat. One of them being we would either be taking the outboard or rowing dinghy back and forth from Ruckus to shore to get to and from the parking lot. This takes us about five minutes. I learned the hard way to always double check to make sure you have your phone, keys, and your wallet. Apparently this also meant from time to time I'd be bailing out the dinghy. What you doing? It rained a lot last night. So I'm both dinghies. So you're the real MVP. <laughs> Having water was no longer as easy as just turning on a tap. We have a tap, but we just have to make sure we always have fresh water in our water tank. 
We usually did this by filling up water jugs at shore and hauling them back to Ruckus. Or if we ever had Ruckus parked at a dock with a water hose, we would fill her then. Laundry we do at the marina, sometimes Melissa's parents' house, or the laundromat. Our heat when we need it comes from a diesel heater. I'm a pretty big baby when it comes to the cold, so I usually want it turned on before she does. There was no shower on Ruckus, so we would usually use the nearby marina's loony shower. Or when it was hot out, we both preferred using the solar shower in the cockpit. I'm about to have a shower, so to do that we set up a barricade around the cockpit so nobody can see in. And then we have a solar panel, or a solar shower, that heats up in the sun all day. It wasn't that hot today, so I'm in for a cold one, but here it goes. <laughs> With Ruckus up for sale, we were still able to take her out this summer to explore some of the southern Gulf Islands. We really enjoy flipping through the book The Gulf Islands and Vancouver Island by Anne and Lawrence Eden Jones to look at anchorage options. They draw each anchorage out and also include little write-ups that include what the bottom is like and even points of interest to see when we are there. This sometimes even includes pubs. At the very beginning of one of our trips this summer, we were having a little bit of engine trouble. Yeah. Okay, so the engine has been overheating um, and we haven't been able to figure out why. Um, we've still been getting water out the exhaust and it changes, the flow changes with the amount of rev, so that's a good sign. But the engine has been running at hotter than normal, not like fully overheating, but still running hotter than it normally sits and we've been just like picking our brains. We went on a trip not too long ago and we were only able to motor like 1.8 knots. Um, when we got back, we flushed the heat exchanger and a whole bunch of gunk came out the exhaust. And so that was really great and we figured that was a huge part of the problem. And then we also scrubbed the boat as much as we could in the water. So we've been going faster but the engine has still just been running a little bit hotter than it normally does. Um, and we were just at a loss. And then again, it started creeping over 150 and a little bit of steam. And so we let it cool down and started it again and same thing. Um, and so we've decided to tear it apart. We took it out at the through hall over here, the hose off, Kaylee managed to get it off and uh, didn't really find much. There's like a little bit of this like weird green. I think it's just the patinaed bronze flaking off a little bit, um, but that didn't block the hose. We took the hose completely off that goes to the um, raw water filter and that was clear. Um, but then to get into the raw, we checked the sea strainer as well, that was clear. But to get into the sea strainer, there's this little elbow the water has to go between and I think we found our culprit. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, hopefully that explains it and all will be better again. And it was better, so we continued on. I'm frequently amazed at how much knowledge Melissa has when it comes to anything boat related. I'm new to this and everything seems pretty daunting, but she's never afraid to tackle anything on her own. I'm very excited to keep learning things from her and also to continue learning new things together. I'm just sitting here. We seem to have found a really good balance on our trips between busy anchorages and places where we were almost the only ones there. To be. 
but there was always someone or something nearby. There were islands with next to nothing and islands with liquor stores. Maybe just because I look for it, but <laughs> that is really good. Forever free, you and me, meant to be in the great outdoors. Forever free. Before we knew it, summer was coming to an end, and Ruckus was inspected and sold, and we were getting ready to move out. Is this bringing up any feelings? <laughs> yeah. Probably that I should have purged this boat like two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> but also, yeah, this is like my first home, like my own. It's the first home we lived in together. First home we lived in together. Yeah. And it's been an amazing summer and I've been on lots of adventures and yeah, it's bittersweet. Gonna miss her. Yeah, it's really She's so cozy. She's a good boat. Yeah. <laughs> But on to bigger and better things. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and join us next time as we go into the purchase and haul out of our new boat, Sappho. Grats, baby. <laughs> <laughs>